Welcome to another Keymaster episode. I'm Sven Ryla, the host, and today we've got Joey Cortman from Key Factor, and we wanted to get into revocation strategy, a little OCSP versus CRL. So, Joey, why don't you hit it off? Yeah. So, uh, you know, I've been at Key Factor for a couple of years and just trying to, you know, determine, hey, you know, we have CRLs, we know those are good for maintaining and managing your certificates that are issued, and obviously there's OCSP and there seems to be a lot of different ways to deploy it. Um, and I kind of wanted to start off with like, you know, one or the other. Should should you have CRLs or should you just do OCSP? Or, you know, what I guess, what are your thoughts on that? It's a great question. I mean, for me, it's really use case based. Sometimes you can get away with one. Sometimes you can get away with the other. Sometimes just use both. So it really depends on the type of devices that you're going to have involved in this, the well, I mean, software too, because it's not just devices, right? It's whatever it's going to be using the PKI. It's going to be really dependent on that. For me personally, doing this as long as I have, I am a fan of kind of doing both for having redundancy of if CRL's down, you've got OCSP, or if you have OCSP and that went down, you have CRL. So there's always a way to get validation. Yeah. But I guess it's really kind of use case specific like that. And there's really no right or wrong way that you could really say to do it. Because at the end, everything goes around policy. So <laughs> yeah, gotcha. Yeah, <laughs> it's a circle of policy. Yeah, that's that's fair. Um, yeah, because I think you know, and we're and kind of back to CRLs. There's a lot of people that wonder how long CRLs should be for their issuing CA or the root CA. Um, you know, I've I've seen a couple months. I don't know what you've seen out in the field. What do you recommend? If there's any feeling on a best practice there. Ooh, that's a tough one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so lifetime. I would say, at least in the U.S., from my time that I spent in commercial, it's more about a year for an offline route. Maybe they might issue every six months. Yeah. Talking with the PS guys over here in Sweden, it's been where they say they do it every three months. Okay. So I guess we could say it's regional. It's also pretty policy driven at that point too. Yeah. I've worked for PKIs where we had an online route that was issuing a new CRL. What was it every forty-eight or seventy-two hours even? Gotcha. A little uncommon, but we did that. Yeah. So. Definitely use case driven. And I I mean, I'll, for me, online routes could be longer like that, you know, three months to a year, maybe issue it every, you know, three months or every six months and have a good for a year at that point. And then issuing CAs, I'm kind of a fan of no longer than 72 hours. Okay. So I would do a daily issuance with a max lifetime of 72 hours. That way I've got at least a 48 hour window in case anything happened to the PKI. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and you know, for the serials hosting, uh, it sounds like having them available is obviously pretty critical to your PKI functioning. Um, you know, from a deployment standpoint, I see people using CDNs or just web servers, uh, and there's always a caching mechanism with like revoking something and then it getting updated right away. Um, I mean, what what have you seen out in the field in terms of people making sure, hey, the caching on this is set to nothing? You're always pulling the latest file, or they want to keep some caching to keep things more, uh, you know, quick for some application that can't download a CRL that's a couple megabytes in size or something. Ooh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of a loaded thing, wow. but uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> huh. I mean, I've seen CDNs used, I've seen single web servers used, I've seen web farms used. Yeah. It, for the caching side, I guess that's really kind of client dependent from what I've seen. Yeah on that. And I would say if you wanted more real time, then that's where OCSP is definitely going to be your friend. Yeah. So if you needed like a NAC and you want to do block building access right away to somebody, the real time OCSP with EGBCA would be the way to go and not be dependent on CRL. So the software application that's filling in for your NAC, you know, have that configured for OCSP to go right over to EGBCA for those. Mm -hmm. And then that would obviously be the real time for you. And then CRL wise, I mean, I don't know if I can really answer that. Yeah. I mean, there's just so many things out there. And at least from what I've seen, it, it's pretty application specific on controlling the cache of it. Most of the time, it keeps it for the cache for the duration of the lifetime of the CRL, I believe. Yeah. It, it, I mean, Windows, I know, you know, the client would keep it until the next update that Microsoft had in their CRL setups. Yeah, um, right. So if that doesn't exist, I think the client just waits till it's pretty close to expiring and pulls a new one. So it could be a while before it realizes something's revoked. On a Microsoft, at least on a Microsoft client. So, so yeah, that, yeah. Well, cool. Um, yeah, Sven, that I think that's that pretty much cool. answers most of my OCSP questions I had. Well, that's great. Then let's wrap that up, Joey, and we'll get to another episode with some more fun PKI topics. 
Thank you. Yep. Thanks. And we'll see you in the next episode.